Let's go. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm making a physics-based movement shooter for VR. In this devlog, I'll be going over how I created my physics-based hands and climbing system. The secret to good physics came down to two concepts, PID controllers and springs. PID controllers were completely new to me, but I stumbled across them when I was trying to figure out a way to move an object to a position with physics. If you've ever tried to move a rigid body to a target with physics, you know the pain of it overshooting and orbiting the target. That's where PID controllers come in handy. PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative, and is a control system that takes in an input, modifies the value, and outputs some kind of signal. In my case, I used the difference in position for the proportional value and the difference in velocity for the derivative value because the velocity is a derivative of the position. This PID controller will spit out a force and we can use this force to apply it to our hand in order to move it to the target position. At first glance, the algorithm looks really complicated. And that's because it is, I didn't make it. This is based off of David Wu's stable backwards PD controller, and I'll leave a link to the paper in the description if you wanna check it out for yourself. But the only things that you really need to care about are frequency and dampening. By fine tuning these two numbers, you can get the right feel for your game. In my case, I chose 50 for frequency and one for dampening. Now that we have position working, we can use the same PD controller, but instead of using position and velocity, we can instead use rotation and angular velocity to rotate the rigid body with torque. The code is the exact same, except for all of the quaternion math in the middle, which basically finds the difference in angle and the shortest path to the target angle. If we didn't check the W term, there's a possibility that the hand will go the long way around, which isn't desirable. In my game, I use a rotation frequency of 100 and a rotation dampening of 0.9, which gives a more loose feel. There's a couple things to note about the frequency and dampening values. Choosing a dampening value of 1 will result in a critically damped system, which means it will move quickly to the target without overshooting or oscillating around it. A value less than 1 would be considered underdamped, resulting in fast movement with oscillations around the target. A value greater than 1 is considered overdamped and results in sluggish movement. When testing the system, I found that the rotational force wasn't large enough, so I tried to increase the frequency and the mass of the hands, but both had trade-offs. In order to change the amount of torque a rigid body can exert on others, we need to change the inertia tensor. From my understanding, it works similar to how force works. Force is represented by mass times acceleration, so if we want more force, we can increase the mass of the object. For rotation, the formula is similar. Torque is equal to the inertia tensor times acceleration. By changing the inertia tensor, we effectively change the mass of the object. Now that we have controller movement working, if you try to interact with walls, nothing happens. We need a way for players to interact with their surroundings. When you push on a wall, you should move back. Or if you push down on a ledge, you should be able to lift yourself over and onto the ledge. This is where I use Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law states that the force of a spring is equal to some kind of stiffness constant times the difference in position from the spring's resting position. We can assume that our spring is at rest when the controller and the in-game hands are perfectly aligned. So when we push our hand into a wall, the spring will no longer be at rest. We can calculate the force of the spring by subtracting the controller position from the in-game hand position and multiplying it by our spring constant. If we were to test this in-game, it's pretty unplayable, as the player oscillates out of control. This is due to the fact that there's no opposite force acting on the spring. In real life, there's things like friction, air resistance, and gravity that are able to bring the spring to rest. So what I did is I applied a drag force using the formula drag is equal to negative player velocity times some kind of drag constant that I can change. The nice thing about this formula is that it scales with player velocity. So as the player becomes more uncontrollable and moves quicker, more drag is applied to counter that movement, resulting in a controlled climbing experience. And that about wraps it all up. All you really need for good physics is Hooke's Law and PID controllers. The possibilities with them are pretty much endless. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support me, hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. I also just opened up a Discord server, so if you're interested in testing my game, have questions, suggestions, or just want to hang out, click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and have a good one.